Good morning or good afternoon, depending on when you're uh, watching this. I hope this video finds you well um, and that you are working and uh, enjoying this time at home, um, even though it is a bit of a weird time. Um, in today's lesson, we're going to be looking um, about 200 years earlier than where we've been looking um, in our previous lessons, looking at America. And we're going to look at a group um, who came over from France um, called the Huguenots that came over to Britain um, in the late 16th century um, and onwards. Um, and we're going to ask ourselves this question. So the question, the big question for today's lesson is, were the Huguenots the first refugees to Britain? And these are our key words that we're going to come back to at the end of the lesson. Huguenots, refugees, reformation, indulgences, heretic, schism, and Protestant. Some of those words we'll have heard before, some of them will be completely new. And the understanding questions that we need to be able to answer are, why did the Huguenots come to Britain? And how did the Huguenots change Britain? Our skill is cause and consequence. So, just as a little recap for us, we in our top right, hopefully people um, might remember him from uh, previous lessons. This man is called Martin Luther. He's got a strong hat game. Um, and in 1517, Martin Luther is a German man. He nailed a document with 95 theses to the door of All Saints Church in the German city of Wittenberg. So there were 95 criticisms of the Catholic Church, 95 things that Martin Luther thought were wrong with the Catholic Church. And remember, at this time, the Catholic Church is the most influential um, organisation in the entire world. Most people are Christian, um, and, they, and, and most people of those Christians are um, Catholics. So one of the criticisms that Martin Luther was making was the selling of indulgences. This is another one of our keywords, so make sure you remember what these are. An indulgence... Um, was something that the church would sell you that would be like paying your way into heaven. It would be like, yeah, you can live however you want, as long as you pay some money to the church, that will count as an indulgence, and that will be your ticket into heaven when you die. And Martin Luther says, that, well, that's nothing like the Bible story, um, as he knows it, that's nothing like the message of Jesus. Um, so he thought it was wrong, um, and it was one of his big criticisms of the Catholic Church. And these criticisms led to a split or it's sometimes known as a schism, which is another one of our keywords. The schism is a split in an organisation or a split between a group of people. So on one side of the schism was um, the Catholics, and on the other side were this new group called the Protestants. That we, We've looked at this before. It's because they are protesting against the Catholic Church, so they become Protestants. Um, People were upset about the way that the Catholic Church was using their power and their wealth, and they felt that they were taking advantage of people um, who were just trying to live their life and serve their God. Um, so Protestants break away. Now Protestants, um, Catholics and Protestants, is a divide that still exists today. So as we're going to look at, um, Britain is a Protestant country. Um, uh, our, our church is the Church of England. Um, and But yet you still have people in England who are Catholic. Um, and so they believe this. They both believe in the same God. They both believe in Jesus. They both believe in the Trinity. Um, but there are slight differences in how they practice their religion and in what they think about about different things, like communion or like the Eucharist. If you've ever been to a church that's so taking the, the, the bread and wine, there are some differences that we don't need to go into now. But if you want to go and research it, you can do. Um, so this new type of Christianity, Protestantism, suddenly swept through Europe. Um, and many countries converted, like Britain, from being Catholic to being Protestant. And this made the Church of Rome, okay, so the, the Pope, um, and who is the head of the Roman Catholic Church, he was really angry about this because he felt that the right way um, for people to, to celebrate their Christianity um, and to have their faith was to be Catholic. And this anger started many wars, massacres, so killing lots of people, um, and many lived in fear because of religious intolerance. Intolerance is a word we've looked at all the way through this migration topic of people um, not be intolerance is when people are uh, mistreated because of their beliefs, or because of what of who or what they are. Um, and one of these Catholic countries who are angry about the spread of Protestantism was France. So before we get into France, let's have a look at England. So look at this vision of a man, power stance here. 
hopefully we know that is Henry VIII, another strong hat on uh, show today. Henry VIII, he broke from Rome in the 1530s and turned England into a Protestant country. Now, Henry VIII, he didn't really care too much about what Martin Luther was saying. He, was, he, he actually had been a Catholic all of, his, all of his life and didn't really care too much about um, indulgences and things like that. He just wanted to get a divorce, as you probably know about. Um, and he also wanted to be able to get his hand on the, hands on the church's money. So he breaks away and sets up this Church of England, which still exists to this day, um, and is the state church um, in England. It's the, it's the, the most common one. The, our Queen is the um, head of the Church of England. Now, his eldest daughter, Mary I, she briefly tried to reverse the Reformation uh, and go back to being um, Catholic. But apart from her, um, future kings and, and queens made England a safe place for persecuted Protestants. So people who were being um, picked on, people who are being um, disrespected and uh, in some cases are being uh, threatened, um, they were England became a safe place for them to go to. Um, because it was a Protestant country. And France was one of Britain's biggest rivals up there with Spain and Portugal at this time. So we're going to meet the French Protestants. Now the fancy word for the French Protestants, which is what we're going to be using from here on in, they were the Huguenots. The Huguenots. Um, you can put your best French accent on um, to help you. Um, in Catholic countries like France, Protestants were seen as heretics. Heretics, another one of our keywords. Heretics means somebody who is preaching um, the, fo uh, the false gospel or preaching something that is against God. Um, and heresy, being a heretic, was seen as a really serious thing. If you, were, if you were trying to change God's message and preach something different from what other people thought was true, you were treated as a heretic. And it got so bad that in August 1572, and this picture um, is, a, is a, a, a painting of this event, August 1572, tens of thousands of French Protestants, or Huguenots, were killed in the St. Saint Bo Bartholomew's Day Massacre. So the Huguenots, because they wanted to get away from horrible events like this, they made the trip across the English Channel to the nearest Protestant country of England. Now, over the next hundred years, it didn't. They they weren't being the Huguenots weren't being massacred um, and persecuted that whole this through that throughout this whole period of time. Um, things did get briefly better um, under the French king Henri IV, um, but. In 1685, they had a, a new king at this point, Louis XIV, and 200,000 Huguenots were forced to become refugees um, because they removed their religious freedom. It, um, their, their king, Louis XIV, made it illegal um, for them to practice their religion, and they, so they felt they had to leave. Um, and 50,000 of them sought refuge in England. Now, you'll have heard the term refugees. We'll have looked at it in many of our lessons, and you've heard it on the news. Um, and I'm sure you've got some idea of what it means. But what makes a refugee a specific type of migrant um, is that a refugee is somebody who is seeking refuge. To seek refuge means that you feel that the place that you are in, the place where you normally live, is not safe, and you need to go somewhere else in order to feel safer. So a refugee would travel to a different place, a different country, in order to seek refuge for their own safety. So that is what a refugee is. And 50,000 of them um, sought refuge in England in 1685. So how was England impacted by these Huguenot refugees? So Huguenots were skilled craftsmen. So they made things like watches, guns. They did things like book binding, which were still quite new around this time of, of putting books together. And they also um, made hats and were also good with uh, making things out of glass. So these became really important industries that the Huguenots brought over um, to Britain. Um, they established businesses in areas such as London, Plymouth and Norwich. Um, and one of the main things that they introduced were, was paper making. So before the Huguenots arrived, um, there'd been no paper mills at all in England. Um, but by the 1710s, um, about 100 years after the, the Huguenots first arrived in Britain, there were 200. And one of the, the lasting things that um, the Huguenots brought into Britain was that British banknotes, as we can see up here, were printed on Huguenot paper, paper from a Huguenot paper mill, from 1712 all the way through until the 1960s. So that's a huge amount of time um, where this really important thing about British life, having paper money, people held it and paid for things all the time, 
that was done with something that the Huguenots had brought to Britain. So did everyone react well to the Huguenot refugees? Now, whenever we talk about refugees, um, and if you think back to um, your year eight lessons where we, we looked at um, how um, refugees are sometimes treated in the media, um, there were some um, people who did not like the fact that people were coming over to their country from somewhere else. So there was quite a lot of anti-Huguenot feeling. Some people felt, and this is a common complaint that people have made over the centuries, that when refugees come over like the Huguenots, they take jobs away from English people. Um, and Huguenots were also seen as dirty and full of disease. So they found a way of um, demonising the, the, the Huguenot refugees to treat them like they weren't really people. Um, Huguenots were also mistrusted by some people because they ate different foods from us, like snails. Uh, and that was seen as a very odd thing to do um, in, in Britain. And one member of parliament for Bristol, when they came over, he compared the Huguenots to the plagues sent to Egypt in the Bible. So he was very disparaging, very rude and disrespectful about these Huguenots who were coming over. The main reason they're coming over, remember, is just to seek refuge because where they live is not safe. Um, things like the St. Barth Bartholomew's Day Massacre has made it not safe just to be the religion that they were, to be Protestant. But having said that there were some people who... Um, did not like the new refugees, they were mostly accepted into society. And one of the things that they did um, to, in order to um, assimilate, which just means to um, become accustomed to the, to the British culture, was that they changed their names. So if um, there was somebody there who was called Jean Blanc, um, which um, Blanc is um, French for white, then he would change his name to the English version and he would be called John White. So he did that in order to blend in to um, the British culture. Um, and we've got some famous um, people up here who have got Huguenot um, ancestry, which means that they, um, that they have part some of somebody in their family history was a Huguenot who made that journey um, from France. You've got the first president of the United States who we've looked at in our previous lesson, George Washington. You've also got... Um, somebody who was also um, one of the founding fathers, Alexander Hamilton. And there's a, a really popular um, hip-hop musical out at the moment called Hamilton, um, which a lot of people try to get tickets to. Um, there are loads of other people you can mention. I'm not going to tell you any more because maybe that could be um, a topic that, uh, that you research at the end of the lesson. Now, the French king, Louis XIV, who has pushed them away, he's removed their religious freedom, he realises his mistake because of all of these industries that um, the Huguenots are bringing, to France, uh, bringing from France to Britain. Um, so he actually offers them cash to come back to France. So a few of them would have taken up, him up on that offer, but most of them stayed because they'd made a life in England and they felt that it was um, somewhere that accepted them for the religion that they were. So... This is the question that I want you to have a go at. Now, it's a 16-mark question, but I don't expect you to feel that you have to do a full 16-marker, which would be three paragraphs and a conclusion. Instead, I just want you to use the information from today's lesson and do one really strong paragraph. So, the question is, has religion been the main factor in causing migration to Britain? So, you, you would start off with your point. Religion has or has not been the main factor in migration to Britain because. For the sake of using today's information, it might be easy to argue, as you just do in one paragraph, that religion has been the main factor. And you can give your evidence to back that up from the Huguenots. So, give an example. For example, explain how the Huguenot situation led them to come over. The main reason, it seems from what we've seen today, was because of the, their religious persecution, the fact that they couldn't practice their religion in France. So give a concrete example of that um, for your evidence. Then we get onto our explanation. And remember, there are three levels to this. Um, simple, developed and complex. To get your simple explanation, just tell us that this meant that. What happened as a result? Why did... Um, what happened to the Huguenots in France? Why did that force them to move over um, to uh, Britain? If you want to take it further, give yourself some space to expand on your ideas. Do another sentence that begins with something like therefore or furthermore and just give your ideas space to breathe. And then for that complex explanation, that very, very top level of explanation, could you put in something like however 
and 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 maybe think about other reasons um, why people moved over to to Britain. What another reason for migration? Just to show that you are it, that you understand that this issue is not just a black and white one. There are, there are shades of grey. It is a complex idea. Another task for you to do is you could um, research the impact of the Hugo um, Huguenot refugees on the cities of Britain. And there's a really good website here um, called um, Huguenots of Spitalfields. So I've got that um, on there for you to um, copy down. Um, and it shows you some of the effects that they've had on industry. It also talks about some of the other people who have... Um, who have a Huguenot ancestry that are really important in Britain. You've even got people like um, very famous fashion designer Alexander McQueen. He comes from uh, Huguenot ancestry. You could do a little bit about him if uh, fashion is something that interests you and talk about how his family came to Britain. In terms of sending over your work, um, please do continue to send it um, to rwilliams1 at bluecoatbeachdale.uk.com and you've also got the email addresses of the other two um, history teachers there as well if you're not in my class but please do um, feel free to send any work over even if you're not in my class um, then that, that would that would be absolutely fine um, last thing is we're just going to go back to our first slide and we're going to have a look at our keywords as always I think either write down each of these words and try and put them into sentences to explain the story of the lesson or even better find somebody in your house um, and explain this lesson, explain what you've learned about the Huguenots being the first refugees to Britain using those key words. Make sure you can explain every single one, even tricky ones like schism. And you might have to go back in uh, throughout the video um, and just go over things if you're not sure. Okay, that is everything from me. So just remains to be said, thank you to everybody who has um, sent work in. Um, I know it's a tricky time, uh, but I appreciate everybody who is continuing to do their learning um, and is keeping their brain ticking over um, at this time. Okay, see you soon. Bye-bye.